Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Tyler. And I'm Luke. And this is Holy Heck, I Really Like Love Live, our podcast where we go in-depth and look at the entire Love Live discography from the beginning until now. And hello, everybody who's new, because I know we got a lot of new new faces hanging around ever since last episode. Thank you, Aaron. Got some new homies hanging out. So, yeah, so, I mean, if this is your first time watching without Aaron, uh, we're sad to say that Aaron does not join us on every single episode. Uh, it's just us, usually, so we hope we entertain you just as much as you were entertained uh, the last episode. We actually don't say anything funny, so be ready. <laughs> Watch out! Um, so last time, we asked what your... Uh, I have a hard time with this one. <clears throat> what your least... No, see? Already messed up. All what right, your right. favorite song is from your least favorite subunit. There we he, go. He was trying his hardest. <laughs> um, the first one we want to talk about is from Absolute Field. Nice, uh, nice Ava reference. By the way, yeah, I like that. Um, they talk about lonely tuning being uh, either getting a bad rep or just kind of being overlooked when it was first released. And yeah, I can I can totally be on board with that. But then, uh, in, res- in response to the question, they said, um, "As for the song, I like from my least favorite subunit, Strawberry Trapper, easily. I'm not too into Guilty Kith. Kith. I'm not too yeah, into Kith. Guilty Kith. Yeah, I'm not too into Guilty Kith, both as character unit or even their songs, and more so their last CD." But Stra- uh, Stra- oh my goodness! But Trapper was easily my favorite song out of the initial subunit songs. The vocals are consistent as usual for Guilty Kiss, but what really sells it is the instrumental. That bass is killer. Um, this is the kind of just like proving that Strawberry Trapper brings everyone together. Man, what a good song! <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good one. It's kind of like Yazora and Nandemo. How a lot of people don't really love Siron, but Shiron, but man, do they love that song? Strawberry yeah. Trapper's like that. Everybody likes Strawberry Trapper. I always see, it's really interesting that you say Guilty Kiss is one of your least favorites, because like, I just see so many people just non-stop praising Guilty Kiss, like, forever. Like, no matter <laughs> what, like, Guilty Kiss could, like, get on stage and just, like, have, like, convulsions, and people be like, this is the best subunit. So- this, is the, this is the best live performance in the history of Love Live. <laughs> Where were you when Icon slayed? <laughs> um... So that, that's actually a really interesting perspective to see. And I'm really happy that there's uh, there's some diversity there. And uh, yeah, I love Strawberry Chapel. All right, Luke, hit me. All right, so we got our boy Roku Roro Kuro 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 Ku. Uh, and he talks right, about, yep. he, he did one for Azalea and Printemps. He likes Innocent Birds. Printemps. <laughs> Throw me back to our first episode. Azalea and Printemps. But uh, for Azalea, he chose Innocent Bird. Uh, you know, to each their own. Uh, he said he fell and started to like Azalea more for Tori Corico for the live performance of that. Uh, for Prime Times, he kind of just chose like every song in the in the discography, but <laughs> primarily Pua Pua O uh, and No Except Orion, which are our favorite uh, Prime Times songs that for our least favorite subunit. So that's nice. There's some overlap got there. Some, got some friends going on here. So we were going on our Blu-ray block. Uh, Aaron came in, and we had scheduled that for a different time before we kind of switched up how many episodes we wanted in, which is fine. And we kind of decided with the new songs coming out in Love Life Sunshine Season 2 that we would try to hit them while the iron were, iron was hot. Uh, two week, a week after the singles come out, the full singles, that's when we're going to review them. Um, so just, they're just kind of interlaced throughout the next couple months, you know. And so this week, last week, the OP and the e, the OP came out and it's side song yeah. so that's what we're going to be doing today we're going to be talking about those two which i'm actually really excited about I, I was really hyped to hear this opening i can't say for certain like I, I mean i probably know by the end of episode 12 or 13 or however long it's going to be if it's my favorite out of all the openings but i think it's definitely a contender yeah, i don't it's know a, it's a solid contender at this point for it's me either also. this or um what could i want you know no, i'm not gonna i can't say that without singing it the uh the first one ever i yeah, really like Okatu that one land. okay two land yep so let's give that a listen right now real quick. And hopefully we don't get content ID'd by Lantis. Hopefully EJ doesn't show up with the gun and we can all enjoy ourselves. So play that song.
keeping with the strong tradition of Love Live OPs being really, really good, uh, wow, we have another Love Live OP that's really, really, really good. Wow, and we got when dream. I first watched it, yeah, when I first watched it, uh, when the episode started, I was like, ah, this is, I'm in. I'm still in. Don't worry, Love Life Hell. I haven't escaped yet. Yeah, I, I remember just, I, I was having, it was like the Smile Olympics on my face, dude. When, when the intro yeah. first started, I was like, this is great. It was mainly it's just, just so like, nice to... no, it, it was just like the shock of like, we've been going through sunshine, sh- sh- sunshine withdrawal. It's just been so long. And then just to be greeted with the song. I mean, obviously it wasn't the very first thing we see when we start mm-hmm. the episode, but still, it was really nice. But to, like see them dancing again and singing again. Ah, it's just so. It's see just them so dancing nice. in HD with improved CG. See them dancing in HD with C- with improved CD. I, before we get to the song, I want to talk about the album art and how it's like pretty decent. But there's one thing that throws me off really bad. I don't know if I'm just being stupid here, but Rico's face, her left eye, or I guess her right eye, oh, looks like it just bulges out really oh, far. Oh come on! I, ju- I just noticed Tyler? this. Come on! You didn't it have to like say that. It looks like it bulges out really far. Uh, new idol theory is Rico and Alien. All right, let's talk about the song. No, let's actually on the theme of this album art. Why does everyone look like you just broke in and are like should not be there, and you're taking a picture? <laughs> Everyone's like, "Why are you?" Yeah, here? you're in the you're in the locker room after the live show, and they're like, "Please leave. We're trying to get we're trying to get changed." Yeah, the thing behind them is just like a poster of the venue and not the yeah. actual. <laughs> so, song is like a. Very much so what we expect these uh, these OPs to be. Right. The first verse and the first the first minute and a half that fits into the TV version is very much so like a group song. Yeah. They split into they split into the year groups a little bit um, for some parts, but and then the second verse is all solos. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to talk about. Yeah, yeah. how it, it's exactly what you said. Like it's it's exactly what we've come to expect. It has the same intro vibe that we have in every single other intro song. Um, which yeah, is which the, is a good and bad thing. Build. See, no, I think it's a good and bad thing. I think it's a good thing because it's it's a really good intro. Like when you're watching the show, it's like something. It's oh, like yeah. it's really good op, but a little bit negative because I talked about this in a uh, in a previous episode, and I, I I think I might be the only one. I don't remember if people were agreeing with me or not, but like there's something about intro songs that make them really weird to listen to, in the context of not starting an episode of Love Live. Do you like at least understand what I'm talking about, Luke? I, I agree with that to an extent. Uh, specifically, these intro songs, like I Love Live J Pop, these J Pop intro songs, I'm 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 for saying that. Now, shown in battle anime openings, I'm in. Oh wait, I know I I listen to that like all the time, but that's just because. Well, I think we actually talked about this exact thing when we talked about that before, because like that's pretty much like the only song in the end. I mean, obviously the anime has a soundtrack, but as for just like big theatrical songs that you're going to listen to it's usually just going to be the intro or the ed but love live is based around music so it's just something yeah there's just like a distinction between listening to the actual op and then listening to like a you know a single or whatever i think i think what it does is when when you listen to the songs in the episode they only happen that one time while the op and the ed kind of lose how special they they are they're not really super special anymore even though they can be really good i think this is the best the best op um, but it does follow that formula that all the OPs are built upon. I think I know what you mean. Yeah, that, that's 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 a good way of putting it. Like the just it, it, it's weird because when I first listened to this, I was like, man, this is a real good song. I was like, this is this is gonna be so good. And like, obviously, I've watched it, we're only four episodes in, and I've watched the OP every time. But it just kind of loses. It's not it's not hyper special to me anymore. Yeah, now it's like, oh, it's Saturday. It's time to watch Love Live. It's not like this yeah. this yeah. Saturday coming up. Like you know what I mean. So. This Saturday, in a Royal Rumble, <laughs> in a steel cage. In the locker room that we're not supposed right. to be in. Shout out to the album art. This, is, this isn't the question that we're going to ask, but um, let us know down below who would win out of these nine in a steel cage Royal Rumble. Who would win? You want to take a... Well, can you have a steel cage Royal Rumble? Kinda. Because a Royal Rumble, you got to throw them... You got Well, you got to throw them out, and a steel cage only has the hole on the top. So, okay, a, a steel cage match. We'll just say a steel cage match, belt on the top. So the second verse is really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so no, the second verse. Um, I mean, like Luke said earlier, it's it's pretty much th- this is a love live opening. Like we are, our kind of imagination isn't running as wild as it might have been for a single song. You know what I mean? Like they pretty much have the formula down pat. Like mm-hmm. the first, like the it, it sounds like an intro because all nine girls are screaming at you, and that's that's like what the intros are. And then the second verse, it's like wait a minute, solos. And for for everyone who goes out of their way to listen to it, we got like we're you're separating the year groups. 
Uh, we started out with Rico and Yo, and then we go to Hanamaru, Ruby, Yoshiko, and then I think the order is Kanan, Dayamari. Dayamara might be switched, but but yeah. Um, so that, that's I think that's great. right. Um, I, I think what this song does that's really cool though is that third, that the, right right at the end, that final bridge, where it, the instrumental kind of like drops out a little bit and let G, lets Chica just take yeah, over. Yeah, I was really going to mention that. Yeah. Any of the any of the uh, OPs have done quite as well. Yeah, I got major, all. major, major Mira Ticket vibes from that part. Like, so mm-hmm. much so. Um, speaking of Mira Ticket, where I previously said it was probably Chica's best work, I think this is honestly on par with Mira Ticket. Like, maybe not the entire song. I mean, I do think she sounds really great, but just that little solo at the end. I, I love Chica's Mira Ticket solo, and I think that little tiny mini solo at the end is one of the best things so far. So, And also... Mm-hmm. At the very end of Chica's line, like she has like her little Mina, na, 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 na. the very last thing she says is uh, Mina De, and that does not sound like Chica. Like Anshan just let it all go, and that's Anshan singing those last two words. Like I, I hear it every time, and I love it. It sounds so great. You can tell she was into yes. it. So into it that yeah. she forgot to do her job. Even though we like talked about like how this formula has been done before. That doesn't mean it, it's it's bad at all. This is this is a formula that's been done before, and each time it's been impr- improved upon. And this is this is yeah, it's good. Undeni- I, I, <laughs> I think, in my opinion, undeniably the best put together version of it. Like, wow, do the vocals just sound great from everybody? And it really leads you into huh, the vocals are going to be pretty good this year. And our one song that we've gotten has been really good. Yeah. So. No, yeah. And, I mean, and the, the ED, the ED has been the ED has been awesome, also. The reason that um. It, you know they do it so often just because it's it's worked like it's been proven it's to work. It's, like, it's it's good. There's just something so intro, so op about every op. Like it, they they just get it from the very first op. They've understood. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, really well, really well done song. I think the backing is you could make this argument of like when I when I first listened to it, I was like, oh, it's kind of like a mature, you know, Azoria jumping heart. Azoria jumping heart's very like very upbeat very tempo there's like a bunch of stuff going on in the background well this one's a little bit that's, like that's a really cleaner, interesting thing. you know i think that's kind of a cool way to look at it, it it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of interesting to like compare the seasons and be like this is this is a much more this is and, and, and the same thing happened with muse between season one and two yeah. of uh, sif <laughs> si sif the sif yeah the game between season one and two of the game um <clears throat> between season one and two of sip in the the second season, the OP's instrumental is a lot more mature. It's a lot more like refined. It's a lot cleaner. It, it took and me same, like same fifteen one. seconds of mental gymnastics to remember like the first part of the uh, SIP season two opening. I was like, "How does that start? How does that heart?" And, and I just remember Honika going, uh, "Sa." I'm like, "There it is. We we figured it out." <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it's a it's a lot less just stuff happening in the background, which which isn't true for either of the season one OPs. There there's like definitely a set you know goal, but it's a lot more chaotic. While in these ones, it's a lot cleaner. It's a lot more refined, and it's kind of cool to see that because it kind of fits into how the character you know the show. All the characters are more cleaner, re- refined, better at what they do. It really makes me wonder if we do have an Aqua season three opening, what it'll be like. I mean, I hope we do, but I mean, please, <laughs> please, Lantis. I don't ask for much. If a montage of the last seven times Luke just asked Lantis for just obscure things like Lantis, please come to my <laughs> birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, Luke, you actually mentioned something really interesting while we were uh, prepping recording for this that I hadn't really thought of. Do you want to talk about how you think that the the second verse is like a little weird, like how you like the short version of the song? Oh, yeah. I And this is kind of consistent between all the OPs. I usually like the short version more. I just feel like they cram too many solos into the second part. Um, and, like, it's just... It's too crammed together. I don't feel like the girls get enough time to sing... And I don't like how they're, they're all crammed into like that 45 second bit. All uh, there's eight of them in this one, and they do this all the time in the second in the second verse where the, everybody gets their own solo. And I never like that. I always like the short version more when they're all just singing together. I'd rather have them all singing together for a longer time than solos just crammed into a small area. Because I love the solos in Love Live. I just don't love them crammed together. That's one of my issues with Happy Party Train. Also, all the solos that kind of get crammed together into the second verse. Uh, I kind of feel, I mean, I, I know they have to, like, give Khan on, like, a bigger part, but I do think it's executed a little bit better in Happy Party Dream, because yeah, at least it, we it do is, definitely get some better. solos in, like, the in the first verse, you know. It, it is definitely executed much, much better. Um, it's just a small issue that I do have with it. It's not, it's, not, it's not even worth mentioning. It's just another song that I thought of that 
has the same problem at times. I do think that when you do listen to the OP past the OP part, you do get like that kind of uncanny valley feeling. Like it's kind of like, whoa, there's more song I don't know to if this. I like this. Yeah, I, new song. That was new one song. of the things EJ said when we were doing uh, uh, wa imeno nakade a long time ago. It was like. <laughs> We were like, oh yeah, well, you know, the, we we're talking about the second verse, and he was like, yeah, honestly, I just I haven't listened to <laughs> past the intro very much. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah, when when I kind of when I kind of went on my marathon of listening to this song yesterday, where I listened to it a bunch and and setting up for recording, I was like, man, I just just wish it was only the minute and a half version. <laughs> I wish it was only the minute and a half version, and then the part with Chica solo at the end. <laughs> That's just Mirai Ticket. That's exactly what Mirai Ticket is. Hey, you like this short song? Well, it's short. <laughs> yeah, she's got a really good nice solo at the Mirai end. Ticket. Mirai Ticket's so good. Um, so, just, I don't ask for much, but release that version, please. <laughs> uh, let us know down below. Um, I like the English in the song. I live, I live, love live days. That's some. Yeah, that's we got dream. Good. We got dream. I'm always so. Whenever I listen, I mean, it hasn't happened too much considering that, um, you know, it's only been out for a little bit. But whenever I do get to that part, and it's not during the intro. I'm always like, ah, da, na, na. and then I realize like the the vocals have faded out and they're not going to say we got dream for another two minutes. Yeah, very, no, that, that's very also upsetting. the part that I don't like. <laughs> so disappointing. You want to talk about it real quick? Just mention two little short things about the song. One, they played it live, which is like one of the fastest times they've ever released a song and played it live immediately we'll after. Yeah, yeah they, that, they, at the T-Spook event, they did this song. They had a really lit set list. They had, like, Daydream Warrior, this, Aquarium, I think Happy Party Train, um, uh, Kimi no sure Kokoro, and uh, Majuka Dreamer. Like, that is yeah, a that's lit a, that set That is a list. prime set, yeah. That is wow. We'll never um, see it. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get the one guy recording with this, like, <laughs> Google Glass or something. Come on. <laughs> um, and another thing about this is um, this song was, like, I don't want to say leaked because it wasn't leaked, but it was like played on a radio or something. I don't know the the full it, it was, it the was full played story on behind it. Like a totally Lantis like okayed radio thing where just just this song was played on it. And so like I think a week before it got oh, no, released the, to um, the public, the other song was played too. The oh, the other song version. was played too. Okay. Yep. Okay. I wasn't more than sure. Mm -hmm. So that was we we got to listen to it pretty early, and then people put it on YouTube, and we got to listen to it for a sick hour before they all got taken yeah. down. <laughs> so living the dream. Yeah, but hey, uh, really great intro song. Uh, it's, uh, catch me in a month, and then I will tell you if I like it more than Bokura wa Ima no Nakade. I promise. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's hard to say which one of the OPs you like the most because it's only been out for a month. You've only heard it like four times in the OP. So let it, we'll let you know at the end of the season. Almost every time I have an anime where it's like I listen to the intro, I'm like, this is good. As soon as I get to the end of this season, I, I realize that I'm only going to hear this intro like one or two times. And like at that moment, it grows on me super hard. So when I realize I'm only going to hear the song one or two more times in, you know. That was Mirai no Bokura wa Shiteru yo. After yeah, we Luke and I, yeah, we've just been sitting here for a minute. We're like, all right, we're ready to talk about the next one. And Luke was like, wait a minute. Did we did we mention the name of that song at all? It's so overrated. there's names are there's overrated. that one. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so here's Wild Stars 2, aka Kimi no Hitomi o Meguro. Oh, Jesus, cut off on Vimeo. Oh, uh, cut it's off on, on Vimeo. Hold on. Cocked again. All right, I'll entertain uh, them while I got, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, you got it? Hold on. I'd like to say my fantasy football team is 5-2. and two. We're doing very well. South American Water Buffalo champions this year. So here's Kimi no Hitomi o Meguro Boken, which is the next one. Making sure we get that name in before we completely forget and everything is ruined. <laughs> so, yeah, here's Wild Stars 2.
can't accurately describe the hype when this when Luke and I listened to this song for the first time and then we found out that it was sung in the same style as Wild Stars. And if you have no idea what we're talking about, uh, the song Wild Stars by Muse is really cool in the sense that it is kind of sung in both the Seiyu's character voice and the Seiyu's actual voice. And I mean, they, they go pretty crazy with it in the solo mix, but just generally speaking. And then when we started listening to this one, we were like, wait a minute, hold on. Like, it's it's not entirely confirmed that these are Seiyu voices, but they they sound awfully like Seiyu voices and not character voices. Yeah, we were about halfway through the short version when it came out, and I was just kind of like, wait a second. And I said the thing, and Tyler was like, you yeah, know, I was thinking something was weird. They just sound off. They just sound like their characters, but not like their characters, you know? Like, if all of them had really bad flus, um, but the flus <laughs> oh, made them no, still sound on. good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the rare musical flu. Yeah, yeah. there's just something off about their voices, and we're not going to confirm it here, but we're going to confirm it here, that they're singing in the Seiyu voices, which would be really cool, because Wild Stars was the side song of the season season two. Was that the side song? Season one or season one, two? One, season one. Was, was it season one? Oh, I just man, checked that season one. Okay, it was season one. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, it was the side song of season one's OP, and this is it's it's the side song of an OP. That's what's important. That's cool. Yeah. That uh, <laughs> not confirmed, but I think it's a very cool novel thing and something that I had been asking it for for quite a while. This is like one of the first times the world has heard Fudoden sing not in Ruby's voice. Like if you <laughs> if you search the internet for Fudoden singing, it doesn't exist. And if it does exist, please enlighten me because I've yet to find it. And I've I've looked, believe me. <laughs> um, so, like we we kind of both agree. Like but, but, like full disclosure before we get too too into the song that like this this isn't really our style of music. Both of us like not necessarily even that. It's just we're just not the biggest fans of the song. Like we still have plenty to talk about, but just full disclosure. But we both do agree that this song has like an incredibly like super hard to beat novelty factor. To it like, just like wild stars just like wild stars yeah it's more of just like i mean i don't want to say it's it's on par with after school navigators because that is the the single most interesting song that has the the greatest novelty to it but it's just kind of one of those songs where it's like even if you don't like it appreciate the fact that it exists you know I, when i was driving around yesterday with one of my friends and kind of like i was, I was listening to these two songs and then he doesn't know anything about low love but i was just kind of like ranting and raving about it and kind of what i thought about was what if they like uh, wild stars kind of has the same issue where the backing feels very lackluster um but the but the song itself is is super cool and super unique so you kind of appreciate it more and this is the same kind of thing and uh, and i'm kind of curious if in these two songs they spent more time talking and you know, do figuring out what they want to do with the vocals, and not as much because it's so unique, and not as much time thinking about what they want to do with the um, with the backing. What if it's like a uh, a backwards kind of thing where <laughs> they're like, "All right, let's uh, like they had the backing, and they're like, this isn't good enough. We got to do something flashy. Like, hey, <laughs> everybody sing different." What if the Seiyus just came in and accidentally sang it like this, and they couldn't figure out how to do their their character voices that day? So they were just like, "Okay, just do yeah." It, there's just, just something do it like this is fine. There's just something mystical about this song. Like they're they're all just unable to sing it in their character voices. That's that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the song's um, haunted. Happy Halloween, so, everyone. Oh yeah, this is like the the post Halloween episode. Happy Halloween. <laughs> um, I wanted to do like a Halloween theme last episode, but last episode it was kind of like Eren themed, <laughs> so that would have been a little weird. Like, hello, welcome to our Halloween themed podcast. Just throw like a witch hat on top of Eren's little logo or something. <laughs> but um, this this song's really weird in the sense that it has a lot of really really unique things going for it that kind of get drowned out in the blandness of just the rest of it. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like. Yeah, there's a lot of like really. For example, this is a Baroque song. You guys ever hear of Baroque? That's a that's a genre. Go play some kind medieval of bread? game. No, it's <laughs> um, okay. It's cheese. Let's, let's, okay. Yeah, sure. Let's talk about. Let us Baroque know down music. below what your favorite kind of cheese is. Um. So you know, like if you ever if you ever watch like a fantasy thing and they go to the ball and they play that music that sounds like it's played on an old fashioned piano. Which, by the way, that old fashioned piano, the harpsichord, is actually in this song. Please name another love live song that has a harpsichord in it. Um, Can we get a love life it, song with Gregorian chanting? Um, yeah, that's uh. I tried to think of one to be funny, but nothing came up. Yeah, I can't yeah, there's not joke. one. There's not <laughs> one. I've been thinking about it for the last ten seconds, and I was like, "There's no, there's none." Go on. No, um, sorry. 
So I don't know how we can have a, a song with harpsichord in it and a song that sounds like we're stuck in Dracula's castle at some point in the song. Mm-hmm, yeah. And not and not have this be the most interesting song. It's just so weird how they just have it in like a sea of just common love live song tropes, you know? Yeah, it, it, there's some really weak backing to this song that's carried by the vocals and then some really really interesting parts. There's the part where the uh uh, I, I guess it's the harpsichord at the end where they kind of just start singing notes and uh, it's, it's, that, it's that final bridge where the backing kind of drops out. That part's really, really, really nice. I also think it's incredibly out of place. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it comes in completely out of nowhere. There's no precedent to it even, like, the idea of it even happening. And then it just, like, happens. I, I just think... I. I... I've I've been pretty much like riding on this idea for a little bit now, but I I just it gets more absurd every time I think about it that the the one song in Aqua's discography where they sing like themselves, where they have a harpsichord, where they're stuck in Dracula's castle and Yoshiko <laughs> isn't sc- isn't screaming about it, and we didn't even talk about the little exchange between Daya and Yo in this song because that's pretty weird too, and yeah, it's I know you still like that one. still like surprisingly like weirdly, I don't want to say boring, but just kind of like generic. I don't know. Like, I don't want to harp on the song, harp, haha, harpsichord. I don't want to harp on the song too much, but, like, man, it's just so weird how you can have, like, all this stuff going for it and just be like, meh. I think, it's like that really smart kid that doesn't apply itself. I think the issue with the song, exactly that. There's a bunch of unique stuff happening, but it's not it's not well done enough to actually be good. Do you, do you, do you follow what I'm saying? Like, I know well, what you're saying. Good, it, it can be, it can be something, it can be, for me personally, it's, it's very unique, very flashy, very cool, but it's still... You can have a unique pile of trash, and it can still be unique, but it can Stop. still be not good, <laughs> right? Obviously, that's a little too far of a. Uh, <laughs> that's that's this isn't a pile of trash, but y- you see what I'm saying. I trash was the first saying. thing that came to mind. I I know I know you didn't mean it. We're good, um, or maybe you did. <laughs> this song's still in my top half, like of love love songs. Like this is a song that I will listen to. I don't think this is a bad song by any, any stretch of the imagination. I just think it's really like. <laughs> But yesterday when I heard it ten times in a row, I decided by about maybe, the fourth time, I was like, ah, eh, I don't know if I actually like this song. You know, maybe, do you, okay, so everyone who's been here for a while knows that I'm in love with GMOI, and Luke is mad at the thought of GMOI because it's not precisely what he wanted in the song. Mm. And like, you agree that it's a, it's like a good song on its own merit, but oh, yeah. like, the, the is fact awesome. that, but the fact that it's not what you wanted is kind of mm. like, that's what brings it down for you? Yeah, yeah, GMOI is awesome. I, Maybe that's why I'm not a big fan of this song so much. I just had this epiphany while we were recording live. Like, I I just want so much for the song. Like, they they have, because I, I say it in like every episode, but I love when Love Live songs are just incredibly, incredibly unique. And this song has that uniqueness. It has it right there. It's just like, please do something with it. And then they do this. It's like, ah, oh, come on, you could have done a little better. That's just how I feel about it. <clears throat> it's like it's like giving the best material to an unskilled craftsman, right? Do you see what I'm saying? Like that, that mm. there we go. There's that metaphor I'm looking for. Not it has nothing to do with trash. Leave the trash metaphor behind. Forget about it. This isn't trash. It's like giving the best material to a guy who doesn't know how to use the best material. I'm not, and this isn't a. Now I feel like I'm calling out like people that made the song. This isn't a call out to you guys. I love you. I don't know who you are, but I I, I don't know who you are or where you are. Oh, I know who they are. Let's uh let's Ooh, talk about that go. and how um this composer, which is uh. Kazu, sorry, Kazu Nori Watanabe, and they made a lot of really great song, including some of your favorites. A lot, they made a lot of great song. That was a pretty favorite. good thing to say. Uh, they made Mermaid Festa One. That's, Fiesta. That's Mermaid Fiesta One. Yeah, they made Natsu Oranide, which is one of my favorites. Um, and they did a lot of other stuff for Aquas too. Like they did. Uh, I wonder how many people are listening now and don't know the Fiesta to Festa reference. We're gonna keep making it. Oh, we got we got a whole bunch of new people. So go watch our first uh, episode. But they have a lot of like hand in hand. But you could dreamer. That is that is my single favorite. And it's just like this person just made. They're, they're both listed under the composer and the um, and the arranger. So it's just weird to see that this, like, they they know how to make a good song. Like they've proven time. With, they they made Mujuku Dreamer. I mean that's like an argument in itself right there. Like they they made what I consider the single best composed song in the entire Love Live discography. So it's just kind of like. We know you can do so much better. In no, my but, personal opinion, like if you love this song, then please tell us how wrong we are and just keep loving the song forever and ever. Like that's super cool. Yeah, but call us idiots. Let us know down below for idiots. <laughs> but just for me personally, it's just like I, I just feel like they can do a lot, a lot better. 
Yeah, song kind of falls flat. Um, there, but it has it has really strong moments, and it's incredibly unique. But it unfortunately just doesn't just doesn't get it done. For me personally, well, and for me personally, anyone else get a uh, but now September rain vibe from this song? Like the last uh, the 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 words that are repeated constantly in uh, Chika Kanan's summer vacation song. But now September rain. Like it's kind of like Sleeping somber. On that song. Or, stop it. It's kind of like. <laughs> slow and kind of like i don't want to say morbid because that makes it sound like you're gonna die or something when you're listening to the song but it's just kind of like slower more somber really kind of like it's kind of just a song in minor like just just a general idea it's very but now september rain to me (laughs) wake me up when september ends wake me up when season two ends so then i can marathon it all and i have to wait between every week I know, I feel so spoiled, because I like started watching Sunshine like right after it ended, so it was just like, alright, the next episode. Here we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think I think it's a good song. I think it's definitely in my like top half of the discography, too. Like I don't, by any stretch of the imagination, think that this is a bad song. It's just not a, a great song that I wanted it to be. It's like, you have all the tools to be a great song, but you end up just being a pretty good song, you know? Yeah, exactly, yeah. This is, this is the... Um... This is, I don't want to say the Ryan Leaf because Ryan Leaf was a complete bust. Uh, let me tank on this for a second. I'm trying to think of a guy who was incredibly skilled and gifted but didn't make it. I, you know what? I don't have to come back to this. Ooh, this is the Andrew Bynum of Love Life songs. There we go. Yeah, you, you heard it here. I know what that is. <laughs> that's, a, that's, some, that's some good sports ball reference right that's, there. That's some sports ball. Although this song probably tried and Andrew Bynum didn't. Uh, you know what? I'm. What's our question? So our question for you guys this time is, what is your favorite, like, really unique song in the Love Live discography, right? Like, we, we talked a whole lot about uniqueness this episode, except what we didn't in the uh, in the first song. We are like, this, well, is, this is standard. <laughs> I th- well, I think that's a nice juxtaposition. We talked about something that's more cookie-cutter and formulaic compared to something that's much more unique. I agree. Luke, what? <laughs> all right, so we usually, we don't usually do it, but... Sometimes we like to split up between Aquas and Muse. So, Luke, you're going to do Muse, I'm going to do Aquas. So, Luke, what are, you, what are you thinking here? I guess this isn't, like, one Muse song. I guess it's not really, like, it has Muse people in it. But I'm going to go After School Navigators. We've talked about the song before and how incredibly unique it is. Just, oh, it's so it's it's so unique that it, like, pushes aside that it just tells the other, the other song on the single to go away, Nobody Likes You, even though it's really good. Um... <laughs> This is just or how, listen to my this, heart. Yeah, listen to my heart's really good, but after school navigator is so incredibly unique that it just it just blows everything else away. Mm-hmm. I think arguably the most probably the most unique song in all of Love Life. Yeah, that's what I said before. I completely agree. I think mm-hmm. it's totally the single most unique song in the entirety of Love Life. And it's talking about what food we're gonna go eat. I know, right? That's the best part. Unless we get some like, <laughs> like, I don't. Like avant-garde, like harsh noise. It, it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be the king for a while, unless Aqua's really, uh, really pulls out the guns here. But I picked GMOI because I, I think it's we've gotten like summertime happy songs before. I mean, like look at we we had Mermaid Festa and um, One Two Jump like right out of the gates. Like <laughs> they were like, what songs do we do? I know, like summer happy fun time. So that's not well, too new. Mermaid, the first but, Mermaid Festa is not very like summertime happy sounding. Mermaid Festa Volume yeah. Two is, but okay, yeah, yeah, but still, but um. I, I just I really like the uh, the kind of like acapella like you, you cover on YouTube ukulele style of GMOI. I think it's fantastic, and I guess I don't really have a full unit aqua song either. But hey, um, no, I, I, from the second this happened, I remember we talked about it in the uh, in the episode where we listened to the summer vacation songs. How this song started, we're like, haha, this isn't the Yo-Yo Shiko songs. They're going out of order, silly Lantis. And then it ended up being in order. We we're like, wait a minute. Hold on, this is not what we thought. And I ended up liking it, and Luke ended up getting mad about it. <laughs> I, I really but, like it, it's a really good song. But, um, yeah, I, I think just sleeping on this song. GMOI's, GMOI's instrumentation is just so incredibly unique. It's so light and fluffy, um, even though it, it, it's got it's got instruments that have never been used before, so it's very cool. Steel drums, seagulls. Yeah, steel drums, <laughs> yeah, seagulls. Whoever <laughs> thought that the seagull instrumentation would be the, would be the goat? Let us know down below. Actually, no, really, for real. Let us know down below what your um what your favorite really really unique song is in the Love Live discography, and let us know why. You can uh you can join the uh our pack of goons, our Dexter Fillers, our sticks, our mediocre meteorite and mid colas who comment on every single video. <laughs> MVPs. I'm hyped to, to to grow the family here. This Raul is pretty great. Alvarez. 
Raul, how could I forget Raul? I didn't forget you, Raul. The guy who's got the general as his picture. I can't think of her name. Ghost in the Shell Nick girl. Van Nick Van. No, that's Nick Vanderhoven. Yeah, 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 yeah. Raul Alvarez has uh, has your score. Yeah, right no, now. no, I, no. I'm thinking of Nick Vanderhoven. I just couldn't remember his name. Well, I didn't forget you, Raul Alvarez. No, I said I said Raul Alvarez also. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Can't lie, you're